Our content partners at State Impact have published an alarming medical story on the reemergence of syphilis in Oklahoma and the impact it is having on women and their newborn babies. Catherine Sweeney sharing her reporting with our own Alisa Hines. Well, Catherine, I am really surprised at the increase in syphilis cases, especially in women. I thought syphilis was eradicated back in the 1990s. It pretty much was eradicated for a long time. Um, Oklahoma, as well as the rest of the country, saw um, a syphilis pandemic in the 40s. And we used a lot of policy and improved care and improved prevention to kind of put the kibosh on that. And that really did work. Um, something that people who are around back then might tell you and remind you of is that we had syphilis tests before marriage. You had to have a syphilis test to get married, stuff like that. We had a big policy push to cut down on syphilis. Um, and so it was pretty much gone. Um, we're not really sure what happened, but it did start reappearing around the 2000s in Oklahoma, a little bit before that nationally. But that was mostly among men who having sex with men, that population. Um, it wasn't until about 2014 that it started showing up in heterosexual women in Oklahoma. And now we're seeing an increase in infants being born with syphilis. Uh, what's the rate of the increase with them being born with the disease? And what are some of the domino effects with babies being born with congenital syphilis? Right. So uh, speaking of domino effects, obviously heterosexual couples face a unique risk, right? Men having sex with men cannot pass that on to babies, um, but heterosexual couples can pass syphilis onto babies. Um, so among women, we saw an increase of about 860% um, of syphilis cases from 2014 to 2018. And then from 18 to 19, we saw about a 92% increase in congenital syphilis cases. Um, that can present so differently and all these different people. That's one of the worst things about syphilis. It, it's not cookie cutter. It, it presents uh, differently from person to person. It's called the great imitator because it can look like other STDs or other infections. So in adults, it can look like herpes or look like warts or just look like a rash um, and it can disappear. It, it can make you think, oh, I'm healed, I'm better, but really this bacteria is still living in your body and you can still pass it on to the baby. So in a baby, it can just be a rash, uh, but it can also cause some severe um, birth defects. It can cause um, some neurological issues. It can cause um, some you know, um, skeletal issues, teeth issues. Um, similar to an adults, it can just look so different in person to person and babies as well. So when should somebody get tested or screened for the disease and what can be done once they've, it's been discovered they have it? So specifically in pregnant women, um, it is really, really pivotal to get tested three times during your pregnancy, uh, right when you start your prenatal care, about halfway through, and then before delivery. Well, Catherine Sweeney, it was an eye-opening article. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much for having me.